Okay, uh, my name is Red Lambert. This is Cameron Barlett. Um, we're from Inpraxis. We're the people behind Educommons, the software used for open force card management. Um, uh, I assume that um, you've heard of it before. Has anybody not heard of Educommons? Okay. All right. Um, a couple of you. Um, so Educommons is a, oh, we call it an open force card management system. Um, what we're doing today, it, we've um, been in this business for quite a long time. Um, we got started very early on when MIT first started doing open courseware with a grant from the uh, William and Flora Hewlett Foundation uh, to build a turnkey solution for doing open courseware to lower the barriers and make it a, a low cost proposition. Um, what we'd like to do today is kind of uh, gloss over. We're really excited because we have a brand new release out today with a bunch of new features. So what we'll do is we'll talk about some of those new features and then if you have uh, more interest in the, the general platform and stuff like that, then please feel free to come uh, talk to us later at the, uh, at the science fair that we're doing. Um, so to just get, uh, to get into the thing first of all, our platform is built on, on Clone, and the newest release is built on uh, Clone 4. And one of the things that was a major focus in Clone 4 was performance. So what we're seeing here, this is just the raw Clone 4, <coughs> Clone 4 performance that we're built on, we're seeing gains of 65, 53, 41%. So it's a pretty significant speed up in the platform. Um, if you look at, um, and this is not our slides, this is slides by the Clone community. So, and, you know, take them for what they are, but you can see if you compare them to some of the other platforms, it is also a significant increase across the board with open source platforms. An increase in speed of student access? Performance of the actual software pages being rendered. Okay, so yeah. how fast do you yeah. might be? Which is actually a really important thing for open course yeah. because if people have to sit and wait for their pages to load, then you, you might lose them. So. Okay. Okay. All right, so some of the things we've done is we've, um, we've uh, done major updates to the UI, and we'll see that in a minute here. But um, we've you know, customized it with a, nor a more modern fix with display. Um, we've moved some of the additional functionality around so that it's more intuitive. So that you know, with this idea, keep the simple things simple and the complicated, complicated things possible. Um, we uh, updated the table styling and light box integration, and uh, a lot of other wonderful up-to-date things. So, um, we've also integrated a top-level schools object, and we did this for a number of reasons, because some schools are divided into like an arts and science, or and then they have departments, and then they have courses. Some institutions, however, just focus on departments and courses. It's an optional thing so that you have this flexibility. But it's, it's, it goes one step further. It's even optional enough that if you wanted to adopt Educommons across multiple institutions, then you could use that schools function as a top level organizer. You know, I just make it very simple. Okay, um, talking about metadata, um, uh, what we've done is we've, um, I don't know if you've seen uh, MIT's latest, um, so they have little boxes that, that um, next to the course listing that takes you right to the lectures, right to the video and stuff in the courses. What we've done is we've taken that idea and moved it a step further. So now when you build your courses, you can go uh, the content in your courses, you can mark them as a syllabus, an assignment, or something like this, and it gets embedded in the metadata. So now that it's embedded in the metadata, we can do things like enable that for sem semantic web crawling as well as human crawling. And we've um, in implemented a, a system similar with those icons on the front page. So now, when you see the whole list of courses in your open courseware, you can, from that single page, you can drill down right to a particular resource in that course. So um, we, um, the, one of the always, always that we've always worked on is this value proposition of you know, when you first uh, are running an open courseware and you want to build content. The last thing you want to be, um, you know, worried about is metadata standards and, um, it, you know, is it IMS compliant? Do, you know, who can we, you know, you're you're really focused on the data. You want to build the course. You know, the con you have this content you want to get up. You want to get it out there. And our value proposition is if you use Edge Commons, then you get all this extra stuff for free that you don't have to worry about. Things like uh, um, RDFU for semantic web. Features OEI feeds um, for harvesting your metadata and holding in a digital library. RSS feeds, which holds the um, uh, the metadata 
which is a primary way of in integrating your content with the Open Coursework Consortium website. Um, being able to import and export your materials with the metadata intact. So if you assign an author to your course, when you move that content around, that information will go with the course and go into your LMS or into any other environment you use that content. Um, what we've done is kind of done some um, clever things. Um, that we've included a, a little fix to be able to um, be able to tag your metadata if you're at, um, so that if you put a little at sign in front of it, then you can say it's institutional, or you can just put an individual name, and that way the system will recognize it, and we'll we'll see that in action a little bit later here. But lots of little tweaks underneath to show what, you, you know to make it really really easy to get all of this stuff in your open courseware and not to have to worry about it. Now. Um, one of the things we did when we first built Edge of Commons is we purposely held back from doing things like LMS functionality, grading, and you know, and keeping track of students and private views versus public views. Our idea was that this is open courseware. We want to make it as public as we possibly can, integrating into everything that we can. And you know, we did some experiments with um, some social stuff. That you know, this was. You know, probably a good seven or eight years ago, you know, using forums and trying to get a social context around the content. And, you know, our first idea was to kind of integrate this loosely. And, and we did this with some limited success. And uh, for those of you who know the history of, you know, MIT and social stuff, it, it was kind of a rough and rocky road. But what we, the, the, the real lesson we learned in doing this was that. We don't need to build the platform be one, be all of everything. It, focus on what we're good at, and then integrate with you know, people who are doing really clever things. And now, today, stay in age, we you know come to realize that that was a very very smart decision. We're now integrating with a bunch of different people to provide extra functionality on the site, um, and because of the way we built it, it makes this really easy. Uh, here are some of our partners. We have um, Open Study. Um, highlighter and Nixty. Uh, we'll just talk a little bit about those. Um, how many of you here know about Open Study? Okay, so for just real quickly, for those of you who don't know Open Study, uh, it is a uh, a live feed you can put right on your Open Courseware page, where it, um, and it has a standard set of sub subjects where you can actually, uh, you know, go live right then and there and go and ask your question and get an answer to it. Um, Here's an example of how we've uh, integrated that into Edge Commons. Um, you see here, you, uh, you're right here on the course view. Uh, if you go to the other tab, then you see you have an open study groups here. Let me just wait for it to come up here. But um, one of the things we did was we uh, built into the back end. What you'll see here is now you have a drop down group of these study groups lists. And this is actually live. Uh, uh, live feed from the open study group. So if they create a new one, they'll automatically see the new list. Uh, you just click which one you want, hit the update, and then boom, there it is on your site. And that is all you have to do to integrate with open study. It makes it really, really easy. We're taking all the pain out of that. There's no copying JavaScript and it's trying to stick them in your page or anything. It's just there and it just works. Um, next group we're going to talk about, um, Josh from Highlighter. He's with us today. So. Uh, um, um, he's developed a really, really cool implementation of being able to highlight directly on a website using uh, JavaScript tools. Really, really powerful um, thing to do. Just like if you're in a textbook, you know, sometimes you find a highlighted textbook and it's a goldmine because it has all these notes on it that, that highlight the important parts of it. Um, this can now be um, integrated directly into your open courseware site. Uh, you can see here. Um, there, um, it just closes this box really quickly. You can see here, here's a highlight that's on the site. And if you click over it, you can see all the comments that are made by it. And, you, um, you know, and, so this, and this can happen in real time. You get analytics on the back end to see, to see who's coming to your site, who's reading those, who's doing stuff with those. Now, one of the things that, um, with this integration, we realized that not everybody's going to want their open courseware sites marked up ad infinitum. So we have a few controls over that we have. Um, Highlighter has the ability to have moderation over the top of it, so you can kind of keep track of what's going on there. 
Um, there's also, um, Josh and his team is working on a really interesting functionality, a group's functionality, where you can come in as a professor and students and mark up the site and only have those highlights being viewed by those students. So but this is all functionality you get um, out of the box by um, you know, doing uh, something similar with the open study, just enabling it inside. Um, so the third partner I want to talk about is Nixty. Um, how many of you are familiar with Nixty? Okay, so there are a couple of people in the room. Nixty is a learning management system that is um, institution agnostic. It's designed to be able to um, teach ad hoc courses on the fly, um, similar to like um, you know, your Gmail or something like that. You don't have to manage the LMS on the back end. You don't have to have buy from your institution. You don't have to have approval from your uh, administrators. You just go directly into it and you can teach courses you know, directly out of there. You have people sign up at any time, and it, you know, you can just go and teach your courses. So why is this interesting from an Andrew Collins point of view? Well, because we're a platform that deals with uh, open courseware, and those open courseware materials, our big hope is that somebody is going to be able to take these materials and use them, right? Benefit from it. So what we're doing with NISI is we're partnering with them to build a back end um, that takes uh, the content out of the Educom site and moves it directly into the NIST environment. But we're not just um, content to stop there because what we did when we built Educommons is we have we support a number of formats, being able to pull content in and out of Educommons to make it easy. Things like uh, Moodle, Blackboard, WebCT, and you know a whole host of number uh, other LMSs. That if, if they have an export, then we typically are very interested in getting that information back into an Educom site. Well, the partnership we have with NIPSI, we're actually taking the back end that we built in Educoms, we're doing all this package management and integrating it into their platform as well. So they will have all the advantages that we have of being able to suck in <coughs> WebCT and Blackboard courses into their environment. Um, this kind of gets to, um, you know, the, it kind of solves the, the Hotel California problem. I, I call it the Hotel California problem because if you know the Eagles song, there's a line, you can come here anytime you like, but you can never leave. You know, this is the problem that LMSs have. Well, we're kind of on the opposite side of that. We, you know, we want you to be able to get your content both in and out of Educommons very easily. So that's our partnerships. Now, we want to actually show you now what a new uh, version 4 Educommons website looks like. This is uh, Notre Dame's current website uh, running on the, the previous production release. Um, this is the brand new version. So you can see here are the uh, updates. You see we've got new styling on all the tables and stuff like that. This has been um, customized uh, particularly for um, you know, Notre Dame, but it's, uh, it's a very light customization on top of it. So you can see that we have a nice new modern look. So it will really update, uh, it would be a nice update for you and uh, people who are coming to your open course or site. Now, if you, um, do you want to, yeah, just show the, so here's, now we're just going to pop in really quick to one of the courses in there at uh, Notre Dame's new site. It's the internet is just a little bit slow today. If it doesn't come up, we'll, we'll come back to it. <coughs> okay, well, basically what we, what we wanted to show you is one of the actual courses. i show you with the open study integrated into it. Um, you see if we have the space right down here on the side where it easily comes in there. You saw that in the, in the regular Edge Commons view. Um, I think we'll just go ahead and move on. I think that web is running a bit slow for us. Okay, so some of the back end work that we're doing. Um, one of the, you know, in our, in our long history, you know, we, uh, when we first started out, uh, Educommons was a fairly difficult platform to install. And uh, what, what we've done there is we've kind of eased the burden there. Um, well, first of all, let me talk about this. Um, 
you have kind of uh, multiple issues when you want to install your version of Edu Commons. One of those issues is getting the software up and running, but it's uh, the other is getting all the supporting packages you need to have up and running on your server at the same time. And typically, this has been a bit of a stumbling block for people who are running Edu Commons. So we're looking at um, we're going through that pain for you and looking at the best packages and performance on the whole server application level, not just on the web application level. With the idea of, you know, if you adopt Edge of Commons again, we want to make this the best platform and the best functioning um, website that we can. So we're looking at all these different tools and stuff to be able to, you know, to deal with things like um, caching your site, you know, increasing, you know, keeping stats, you know, hooking up with backups and maintenance and rotating your logs so you don't run out of server space. They're all things that you generally do when you're running the server to keep it uh, nice and healthy. Now, one of the other things we're going to, we want to do is take all this work for building the ultimate server and package it up and put it into a server appliance. So now if you're using something like VMware or KVM or Zen or you know, VirtualBox or other major platforms, you can just pull down this thing right on your laptop or in your server environment, fire it up, and it's ready to go. So huge time saver when you're doing this kind of stuff. And also you can do things like put it up on Amazon's E3 service, or you can um, create an install CD or a thumb drive or something like this and just run it in a live view directly off of your uh, machine. Okay, um, then um, one of the things we're doing is we're, uh, because we're, you know, we're in practice, we, we um, basically make our money by supporting people who are using Edge Commons. And one of the things we do is we host a lot of Edge Commons sites for people. So sometimes people say, oh, this is just too much. I just want the site to be up there. I want somebody else to worry about all the technical details. Maybe you don't have the technical staff to run your own, uh, own server. Uh, we, are, you know, we are very happy to help you out with that. Uh, we are uh, currently, now that we have this new version 4 out, we are um, updating our hosting environment to be able to um, handle uh, some really advanced capabilities. Uh, so to make that really, really easy. Okay, and we, you know, there really is um, a lot more with several bug fixes, um, performance issues, and stuff that we have, you know, been always constantly working on to make the platform as best as we possibly can. Um, some of the cool things that we have, we now have a load test tool built right into the software. So if you have questions of, you know, is this version of Edgecom is going to perform well on my server? You can literally load your site up with hundreds of thousands of objects and do a test to see how fast the page, you know, page responses are. And it's all built directly into the software in the back end so that you can actually um, you know, get a good idea of just the performance of your server and whether it's going to meet your needs or not. So that is the main um, presentation for today, but I wanted to just, um, save some time for some questions. Um, you know, whether they have to do with this latest version, or if you have questions about the history of Educons, or you just have problems using it, uh, we'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, one thing that I kind of heard, you said it's compatible with things like Blackboard. How, how do they interface? Okay, I can actually, um, let me actually show you that. Um, Okay, so you, here you have a course right here. And this is what I was talking about earlier. We we're kind of talking a little bit about, um, here's all the things that you typically do on a course. And then you have, a, um, before the previous version, we just went tab crazy. And they just went all over the place and we just kept adding more and then it was uh, preserved. So what we did is we created another tab. And then what we have in the other tab is you have a whole list. Sorry, I'm setting in the wrong place here. Um, If our internet's going to work. We're actually demoing this off the live site. The slideshow that you saw is a, is a document in EduCommons. So, um, but our wireless is. Yeah, go ahead. So while he's doing that, I'll kind of describe what you'd see. So you see a list of, of items here. Uh, one of those items is import an IMS package. And in that IMS package, there's a number of different formats you can specifically choose from. 
And so typically IMS packages contain in a zip file. So you just select that like you would upload a uh, file to any document. And then it goes and reads the manifest, uh, stores all the metadata, sticks it in your EdgeCommon site, and then puts all the content in your EdgeCommon site as well. What if you want to go the other way? I mean, a lot of people might find an EdgeCommon's course and think, well, it's got a lot of great resources. I'd like to use this in my course in my LMS. Yeah, we, we have two ways of doing that. Um, from a, a producer point of view, you might want to pull it out and put it in something else in your LMS or something like that. If you're a back end developer of content on your Edge Commons site, we have that. We also have a function that um, allows you to push a button, it'll package up the course and then put a nice link out to the side that just says download this course on the site. And that makes, makes it available to the end user. So that so that you know, the end user can come if if somebody you've never met before comes to your uh, open courseware site, finds a download this course link, they can they can pull down a common cartridge format of that course. Okay, so it's a common cartridge format. Yeah. Okay. And we chose common cartridge because it is the most you know ubiquitous. I mean, it's a, it's a really nasty, shark infested world out there with uh, content packaging uh, because, um, like, you know. Uh, what I like, the way I like to describe it is the great thing about standards is there's so many to choose from. And that's definitely the case when you come to content packaging. Everybody seems to implement it a little bit differently. So here you can see, here's the um, IMS import here. So here you can say, here you just get your file and then you can choose which one it's coming from. And currently we support, these are MIT OpenCourseWare packages, um, an IMS content package, um, uh, WebCT Vista, WebCT, IMS common cartridge, Blackboard, and even a Moodle backup are the different options that are currently supported. And, and with our the export is under other, or where is that? Yeah, it's under other as well. So you can see you can export an IMS package. You have the same thing for WordPress. So if you started out with your open courseware on a WordPress site and you decide you really want to kick it into high gear, then um, you can import and export directly from your WordPress uh, account as well. So we've really thought really long and hard about the whole idea of moving content in and out of an open course website, and we've tried to support that really, really heavily. Okay, how are we doing for time? Four minutes. Okay, we have time for a couple more questions. Question. So you talked about metadata before. Um, I saw on your website that you're using the IDE standard in Dublin Core. So the case, have you done any research into starting to move into the schema.org realm as the LRMI is starting up? We're, we're constantly looking at those. Typically they're driven by our um, you know, end user use cases. So we, you know, I mean, we're, we're doing I, IEEE and just specifically focusing on the Dublin core fields, but we are always open to other, uh, other things as well. We like to have that driven by the community because if the community has needs in that, then it's, you know, we like to think we know what we're, you know, what is the most important things, but the community is oftentimes the, you know, people who know best. So if you have um, interest in that, let's talk about that later. So other questions? So you guys, are you guys currently, who, who in the room is currently using EduCons? Have you guys, have you looked at it? One of the things I would strongly suggest is we have a demo site, that um, demo.educommons.com, that you can go to. Um, and go and try all this stuff out. We also have um, a bunch of training materials. If you want to kind of get your hands wet with a kind of a manual that tells you how to do things, let me know we can get that to you and you can experiment with it. Is it, is it something that an individual instructor Use like it, like if my institution is not willing to, like, is it like can an individual create a course? Yes, yes. Um, it typically um, because it's a platform. Um, what we what you need to do is find a way to get that platform up and running. But with the new schools functionality we have, we have the ability for you to be able to join with people across schools and institutions and be able to come in and implement your courses. If you look at the, um, uh, the, the editor, you can just click on the edit. 
I'll put in some coming right up. You see we have a rich text editor built right into the thing, so it's as easy as using a word processor online, you know, tiny MCE, it's what people are used to. So uh, we have a number of different models of the way people actually use the Edu Commons. Some of them have people at the university who build distance or online courses that also do open courseware. Uh, we have models where you have uh, where professors are actually coming in and building their courses in Edu Commons themselves. So the idea is we want to make it as easy as possible to do this kind of thing. So, okay, any other questions? Okay, if you want to see a live demo of this, then uh, stop by our booth at the Science Fair. Um, to celebrate our new release of our Edu Commons, we actually have t-shirts printed up, so see us there at the booth and we'll have those. <laughs>